Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about taking care of your strawberry plants that are in towers or containers, getting them ready really for the fall and winter. They can take a frost, they can take a freeze. I'm gonna show you just kinda of how to put your strawberry plants to sleep, but also get them in good shape so they come back in full force come the spring. Today's video is sponsored. It's sponsored by the original Muck Boot Company. These are the Men's Outscape Low. I've been wearing my pair for nearly three years. I consider footwear to be essential for the garden. It's a tool. You want to have the right tool on your feet, really. You want to have comfort around your feet. And if you're like me, you really want a, a shoe that supports your back, because my back does get sore. I really found greater comfort wearing the Muck Outscape Lows. These are neoprene wrapped, 100% waterproof, and they're just very, very comfortable, as I was saying. And they slip on and off very easily. I highly recommend them. Here is my pair that I've been wearing for nearly three years, still in pretty good shape. I totally abuse these. They sit out in the sun, they bake in the sun, they get rained on, and they're still holding up, but it's time for another pair. If you take care of them for a little bit, they're gonna last years and years. I highly recommend the original Muck boot if you need footwear for the garden. I grow strawberries all over my property. I like growing them in these vertical towers. I have four of them. So today's September 1st, and this is really to put your strawberry plants to sleep. So first thing is water these really well the day before you start this process. You just want the leaves to uh, be alive, really, full of water so they're easy to identify the green, healthy ones. First thing you're going to do is go through, remove the weeds, any completely dead leaves, any leaves that are diseased. I'm going to do that, clean up everything. Then we're going to give them a nice drink of water-soluble fertilizer. I'm going to use fish emulsion. That will give them plenty of nitrogen for next year. That will give them some phosphorus and potassium. They're going to be ready to go. We're going to put in some granular fertilizer um, right on the top, maybe a little bit more soil, and everything's just going to really sit there. I'll explain that process as I go through it with you. The whole key to this is really understanding that you don't have to dump these containers out. You can leave your container soil as is for at least two years, maybe three years, let your strawberry plants grow in them, and you don't really have to worry about over amending the soil. Just add in the liquid soluble, um, the granular on top, compost if you have it, and these plants will do perfectly fine. Now, I'm in Maryland Zone 7. We get freezing winters. The top inch or so of my earth will freeze, these can take that freezing. These containers sometimes freeze all the way through. The strawberry plants are fine. I do not mulch over them. I do not protect them in any way. And again, I'm in Maryland Zone 7. If you're in colder areas, you may have to put some mulch on top of them, protect them a little bit better. But I just want to clarify that these stay as is, just like this. And sometimes the container soil freezes through and these plants come back every year. I cleaned up this tower. We'll look at it a little bit more closely and I'll talk about two ways that you can propagate the runners. I'll show you them in a second. So that tower looked just like that. Looked like the one over here. And again, take off all the dead leaves, the browning leaves, beat up leaves, leaves with holes in them. You don't have to worry about taking too many leaves. Some of these plants have more. Some of them have less, like this one stayed pretty healthy. This one I had to remove a lot of leaves, but you just really need this. You just need one or two leaves coming out from the crown. Now, as these are growing, well, number one, I'm growing alpine strawberries in here, which don't produce runners. They're very tiny strawberries. Uh, June bearing, which means they really bear all their fruit around the month of June. And then ever bearing, which means they keep going. So I have a mix in here, so I get strawberries throughout the year. The ever bearing and the June bearing will send out runners just like this and at the end of the runner there's usually a strawberry plant you can cut that um, put it in a bowl of water i'll show you one way to propagate doing that or you can just really tuck them right into an empty pocket so i use these little uh, carpet staples or these little uh, garden staples for garden fabric and you just take one end well, you take the end or any plant really that's going to fit right into here and you just push the staple on there. You just want the bottom of it. Let's use this one. You just want the bottom to stay contacted to the soil and that's where the roots are going to grow out. Just a side tip, this is the crown right here where my thumb is. Sometimes when people plant strawberry plants, they plant them really too deep. They plant like up to where my thumb is. If you bury this crown, it's going to kill the plant off most of the time. You just want to bury strawberry plants to right about there. And then that, well, let's <laughs> do it so you can see. Just to right about there, 
This way the soil is right at the tip there, the roots come out, but right above my thumb is a leaf, and that's where you get to get all your leaf growth. So this is one strawberry stapled in so that it propagates itself in roots. You could tuck this one in right up here, or you can take these off and you can just cut them. You cut off the runner right there, right there, and you leave yourself with a little plant like this, and then we're gonna put them into water, which I did right over here. If you're gonna put them into water, you wanna make sure you don't put that crown way below the water, so I like to sit it in a dish. Again, just some other, here's an example of an everbearing, so I'm gonna get strawberries in September out of these plants. So I really wanna propagate the everbearing, because I really enjoy getting strawberries in August and September. And you can see, like up here, some of these leaves are a little bit beat up. You could remove them or keep them. More runners, and I don't know if I can break this, they're pretty solid. Yeah, so you just snap it off, and this is a shallow dish of water right in there. And you want enough of them so that the, they don't fall over on their side. They'll probably be okay, but you want to try and set them in whatever container you're using. So just the bottom here is sitting in the water. So I'm going to have a lot of runners. So this will be all filled up. I'm going to bring it inside the house, and you just leave it for a while. And then after a while, you're going to get a nice root system just like that, and you would bury this into the soil right to here and you're gonna have another strawberry plant. All right, let's get to feeding these plants the water-soluble fertilizer and I'm gonna be using fish emulsion. Next is really fertilizing. So fish emulsion, just follow whatever instructions come with your water-soluble fertilizer for filling up about two gallons. So that's fish emulsion. In this container I have compost. So if you have compost, you can just put straight compost into the pocket you could also add in to your compost if you want a handful of organic granular but if this was just like a potting mix or something that didn't have a lot of nutrition that's all you're doing is you're throwing in a handful or two and about this much of product of any organic granular fertilizer that has N, P, and K represented. I just recommend getting whatever's on sale. So the first thing we're going to do is fill the pockets with the fish emulsion and you're just giving, I want to show you about how much each pocket just a really good soak like that. Then we're going to drop on the organic granular extra potting mix or compost or whatever. That pocket doesn't have anything in there, but that's okay. It'll get some in a future date. And I would just go around doing that. You know, you don't have to put a whole gallon into each pocket, but that's giving the plants plenty of nitrogen, some phosphorus, potassium. That's going to help the plants establish. After you do that, you're just taking a handful, something like that, and just dropping it in to the container and kind of leveling it off. You can put in as much as you need. You don't want to bury the crown again, that's the key. And I would just go through and do that for each pocket. And then we're going to come back and water it and we'll finish up. Here's what the tower looked like before we cleaned it up. And this is how it looks now. I think it looks a lot better. And again, September 1st, water-soluble fertilizer, fish emulsion, some organic granular compost, and this plant, or this tower is gonna do really, really well for the next five or six months before the spring comes. And you can even see the everbearing are starting to produce some strawberries. So I have a good 45, 60 days before a heavy frost comes. So I'm gonna get more strawberries out of here. So finally, you water it in. This is a chance to kind of clean up your tower and I just really soak everything in. These plants really got beat up with the 95 degree weather for the summer, consecutive days of all that heat, no rain, and you're really soaking in each pocket. Now you can water these from the top, that certainly works, but when I'm doing this, I like to go to each pocket and give it a lot of water. And this is really gonna set your plants up for a wonderful spring. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and follow. I'll show you how well these plants do. Strawberry plants are really easy to take care of. Again, in Maryland Zone 7, we get an inch, maybe two inches of freeze on the ground, and I don't have to protect my strawberry plants. Thanks for watching.